Okay, I'm probably gonna regret sitting on the floor, but nothing else was working, so this is what we're gonna do. Hi, I'm Sherry. I'm the obsessive book lady, and I thought I would come to you in my robe, all snug from the winter weather, to talk to you about the 26 books that I picked to read in 2023. I'll probably read a lot more than that. I'm I can't remember how many I've got to yet, but I've read quite a few already. So, um, the thing is though, I have so many books that are on my shelves that I've bought that I'm really excited about when I buy them and then I get them and I don't read them. So that's a thing I need to stop doing. But in the meantime, to try to read through the things that I already own, I went and picked 23 things that I really wanted to read whenever they came into my possession and then I just didn't read them for some reason. Then I decided I needed to read some of the middle grade books and the YA books that I had. So I grabbed three more to try to represent those two. Um, and here's what I ended up with. So the first book that I picked is this lovely book here, uh, The Peaceable Kingdom. It is by Ardith Kennelly. Canelli? Can you tell that I've never even really looked at this very much since I purchased it? Um, I got this at, it was um, like a storage building sale and they had some pretty old books in there and I this just called to me. I loved it, how the look of it, but also the story, okay, is about um, a polygamous family. So, it sounded really interesting, and because it was older, I thought, well, this is, I, I'm interested to see the take that they have on it from here. Um, but it says, this is a story of insight and inspiration of a great-hearted woman who created something large and moving out of a multitude of little things. In Salt Lake City in the 1890s, Linnea Eklund is the second wife in polygamy of Olaf, she has borne him several children. She struggles to be a good mother, a good friend and neighbor, to carry her full weight in life and to endure within herself the very difficult battle between love for her husband and jealousy of the first wife. So, I mean, you don't even, I didn't even need much more than that. I was interested. Um, but yeah, I do love these older covers, the way that they look. They're just lovely. Um, I'd love to frame some of these and just put it up on the wall. But that was the first one. And then the second one. This is We Are the Weather. Saving the Planet Begins at Breakfast from Jonathan Safran Foer. I read um, Eating Animals, I think, is the one that I really love of his. And then I had this on my wish list and my husband bought it for me for Christmas, like the year it came out. And I have not touched it at all. So I'm sure this is just uh, more kind of what he was talked about in eating animals, um, the effect that they have on climate change and things like that. So I, I really need to read this one. Then I another one, it drives me crazy whenever I've purchased something that I spent time and researched and went and looked up and then found it and couldn't get it at the library, so then I went and looked for it somewhere else. Um, this is Real Terror, and these are uh, all short stories, and they're all ones that have been made into a movie or something like that. Um, and the reason why I originally looked for this one was because of The Fly. The Fly um, was actually based on a short story. I wasn't aware of that. And the other one that really got my attention when I started looking at it, Twilight Zone, the movie. Uh, when I was younger, I watched it a million times. I don't, I'm not sure why I was obsessed with it, but I have to read the story. But the other one in here, Total Recall, that caught my attention. I also saw that a million times. My brother was obsessed with that movie. Um, so, yeah, I thought these would be great. I've had this for... I don't know how long and I haven't read a single one of them so I definitely need to do that uh, then this one which I actually bought new and haven't read voices from Chernobyl 
the oral history of a nuclear disaster. It says that it was the 2015 Nobel Prize winner. And then I just bought it and didn't read it at all. By Svetlana Alexievich. I think there's a couple of other books that I've wanted to read that she has written and also haven't read that. I don't know that I'm, I don't know that I own them though. Um, so this one, I mean, I can't remember if I bought this before or after I kind of went through this, um, phase where I was really interested in Chernobyl. Uh, so yeah, but this sounds like it'll be great. It's not a very long book. Um, so I need to get on that. I don't know. And it's just lovely. It's got one of those really buttery covers. Why did I, why have I not picked this up yet? Um, so then there's that. Okay. Let's see. Then, okay. Here's another one that I checked out from the library. This is a uh, Virgin and other stories by April Ayers Lawson. Um, I checked this out from the library and then I didn't read it. And then I bought it used off of a books or something. So yeah, that's another thing that I have done in the past. Where I'm like, oh, I didn't have time to read this from the library. Let me buy a copy and then I'll make time to read it. But no, no, I don't. So I need to, I need to get on these. Um, it says set in the American South at the crossroads of a world that is both secular and devoutly Christian, April Ayers Lawson's stories mine the inner lives of young women and men navigating sexual, emotional, and spiritual awakenings. Sold. No wonder I wanted to read it. Why well, I haven't read it yet. Um, okay, then here, this is also a middle grade book. I think this one's middle grade. I don't think it's YA. Age is nine and up. Yeah. Um, another Chernobyl thing. I don't know why I haven't read this yet. Um, another one I bought used. I mean, I bought brand new off of Amazon and then I just didn't read it. I was dying to read it and then I didn't read it at all. It says, on a spring morning, neighbors Valentina Kaplan and Oksana Savchenko wake up to an angry red sky. A reactor at the nuclear power plant where their father's work, Chernobyl, has exploded. So, uh, yeah, I, I need to read that. That's going to be really good. One of those ones that I've just assumed that it's going to be one of my favorite books. So, uh, yeah, this is one that I, I thought that I had read already, but apparently not. According to my Goodreads, I have not read this. I'm not sure if I, I started reading it at some point and then didn't finish it. Uh, this is actually an ARC copy that was sent to me instead of the book that wasn't an arc that I purchased. Um, but I, I was really crazy about this author, Daniel Wallace. And at one point I just started buying all of his books. I'd read most of them already. And I decided I wanted to own all of them. And this one, apparently I had not read yet. I remember this one being kind of a difficult read, uh, especially at the beginning. It says, um, in this literary marvel by the author of Big Fish, magician Henry Walker learns the dark arts from the devil himself, leading him to extraordinary adventures, terrible heartache, and the realization that life may be the ultimate illusion. So, yes. His often have, like, magical realism. Um, just, they're kind of crazy. Some of them can get kind of wacky, but they're they're really good. I really like them. So, there's that one that I need to read. Uh, this one, oops. Uh, this one I got from a thrift store. The Girls Who Went Away, The Hidden History of Women Who Surrendered Children for Adoption in the Decades Before Roe vs. Wade by Ann Fessler. Uh, I had never seen or heard of this before. I saw it in a Goodwill store. And then I was just like, oh gosh, that's really something that I need to read. And have I read it? No, I haven't. Um, and this deeply moving and myth-shattering work, Ann Fessler brings out into the open for the first time the astonishing untold history of the million and a half women who surrendered children for adoption due to enormous family and social pressure in the several decades before Roe vs. Wade. This is the true story of sex and the single girl in the post-World War II years. 
a story not of carefree sexual liberation, but rather of a devastating double standard that had punishing long-term effects on millions of American women who were told they had no choice but to give up their children. Yeah, I got to read that. Let's see, what else? Um, okay, here's another one that's a middle grade that I was super excited for and I needed to read it. Um, the Prophet Calls by Melanie Sumro. And this one is about a polygamist family, I think. Um, born into a polygamist community in the foothills of New Mexico, Gentry Forrester feels lucky to live among God's chosen, apart from the outside world and its evils. On her 13th birthday, Gentry receives a new violin, and more than anything, she wants to play at the Santa Fe Music Festival with her brother, Tanner. But then the prophet calls from prison and announces he has outlawed music in their community and also forbidden women from leaving. Okay, so I love this cover, too. I need to read that. Um, let's see. I'm digging up on this cart right here. That's what I'm doing. Let's see. Okay, this one is um, a book of short stories. A Thousand Years of Good Prayers by Yi Yoon Lee. This one, I think I read one, a story um, in an anthology. It might have been the one that was the, uh, the book that had COVID stories. I can't remember what it was. But um, all of those, the authors that I liked, I added one of their books to my list so that I would remember to go check them out. Um, so this one, also very short. I should, I should get on that. Um, brilliant and original, introduces a gifted new writer whose breathtaking stories are set in China and among Chinese Americans in the United States. So, okay, this is one that I should have read a really long time ago because for some reason I think that it's going to be like one of my favorites of all time. I do like Clive Barker. I haven't read a ton of his books, but um, Cabal... And I'm going to blank on the name of the movie that this was turned into. Um, oh, my goodness. Oh, Nightbreed. Nightbreed. I was obsessed with that movie whenever I was younger. Another movie that I've probably watched a million times. But, yes. So, this is about Boone, who is uh, the, the main character in Nightbreed. And... It's just strange. You eventually end up in this uh, cemetery where there's like this world underneath where all of these rejected um, creatures live and Boone ends up being one of them and helping them. Uh, it was it was weird, but I absolutely loved it. So, um, yeah, I need to read this one because... I actually realized about this being a book whenever a sequel came out to it. And then I was like, wait a minute. And I have the sequel too. And I can't read that until I've read this. And I've had this now for years. So I should read that probably. Um, let's see. There's probably going to be more falling. Okay. Another one. I'm not sure why I ended up getting onto this, but, uh, a Thousand Lives, The Untold Story of Hope, Deception, and Survival at Jonestown. Um, I'm not sure how I ended up hooked on that. Um, but yeah, this is the story of Jim Jones, this cult leader who uh, led all these people to kill themselves. Well, they didn't kill themselves. Was this the ones that drank something? People's Temple, Full Gospel Church in Indianapolis. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm getting distracted because I was like, why haven't I read this book yet? Okay, yeah, I need to read this. Um, and I and I that's one of the things that I'm pretty interested in all the time is anything cult related, so I should read that 
Another nonfiction book that I should read that I don't know why I haven't re read yet, The Rape of Nanking, The Forgotten Holocaust of World War II by Iris Chang. I know this is very good because I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about it and saying that it was very good and it's something that uh, I haven't read enough about, so I should probably read this to get a little bit more... Um, understanding under my belt. I've read some things that were took place during this time, but I'm not I can't remember. One of them might have been a graphic novel. But anyways, I need to read that so that I uh know a little bit more about that. And then this guy here, which is very it's really weird and creepy. It has like this weird fuzzy cover. Um Tampa by Alyssa Nutting. I tried to listen to the audiobook of this at some point, and I did not like it and, and stopped listening to it. And then I started talking to one of my friends about it, and she really wanted to read it too. And then I bought it, and I put it on the shelf, and I have not read it. Um, if you've seen this before, you probably know what it's about. It's the one that's about a teacher who is, um, after her 14-year-old student, she's an 8th grade teacher. Uh, she has a singular sexual obsession, 14-year-old boys. So she pursues her craving with sociopathic meticulousness and forethought. Her sole purpose in becoming a teacher is to fulfill her passion and provide her access to her compulsion. As the novel opens, fall semester at Jefferson Junior High is beginning. So again, all, all these books sound really good. I understand why I wanted them, but why have I not read them? I don't know. Um, oh, we're getting ready to have a claim. Uh-oh. Are you okay? Yeah, I've got you propped up on some books here. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, the next one, The Average American Male. By Chad Kultgen. I don't know if it's Kultgen or Kultgen. Um, I have not read any of his books, but I have seen a movie that is based off of, uh, I think it's called Men, Women, and Children, something like that. That's based off one of his other books that I also have. Um, this one, I remember when I first opened it, and this is another one that I got from the library, and then I didn't read it and wanted to buy it. Uh the beginning says, Chapter 1, Christmas with Mom and Dad. Same old bullshit. That's it. Then it goes to the next one, Chapter 2. But this is like the way that he talks about stuff. Let's see, for example, in this Chapter 2. Um, where is it? It's two days after Christmas. I'm in Denver International Airport watching this old fat eat a cup of yogurt. It's just a lot of just, he just says whatever. I needed to read that for some reason. Anytime there's something that's just different and weird, I think that I need to read that. And apparently I just didn't bother with doing that with this one. I Hopefully I don't, I don't read this and then I'm just so... I think I read some of the reviews on this at one point, and there were a lot of people who were just like, mm -mm, no. So we'll see. I'm still going to give it a try. Uh, then I have this little guy here, which is The Duchess of Bloomsbury Street by Helen Hampf, or Helene Hampf. Um, she wrote 84 Charing Cross Road. And this is, again, one of those occasions. We had a book club at work. And that was one of the books. And I absolutely loved the book. And I loved the movie. And then I bought this. And I didn't read it. So, yeah. That's what I do. I end up liking someone's writing. I buy their stuff some more. And then I just don't read it. Um, and it has this little epilogue that is a little paper booklet that was just inside the book, too. So, yeah. I need to read that. Um, let me grab these really quick. Oh my god. There we go. Okay. 
Jacob Have I Loved. Um, this one is by Katherine Patterson. It is a Newbery Middle Winter, and I have slowly, like, collected, like, children's classics and stuff. Um, I'm thinking this one might be more young adult, but, uh, has something to do with a ghost, I think. Again, I recognize this title. I see it on a million different lists about books for young people, and I have not read it yet, so I really need to do that. Um... Then I have this one, The Temptation of Adam by Dave Connis. I've not seen anything else by this author. Um, I got this years ago at a Yalsa convention. Um, was it a convention? I can't even remember. Yalsa something. Anyways, this author was there signing books, and uh, I was super excited about what this book was about. It was so different, and I stood there and told him how excited I was about it, and then he signed it, and then I never read it, because I'm horrible. Um, this is about a boy, do they say how old he is? It's a YA book. Um, he has a porn addiction. So I thought that was interesting. Um, yeah. His mother left, his older sister went with her, and his dad would rather read Nicholas Sparks novels than talk to him. And yeah, he spends his nights watching self-curated porn video playlists. So I thought, hey, that's different. I want to read about that because um, that's a thing. So sure. I don't know why I haven't read this, so I definitely need to read that one. Um, more nonfiction. Don't Call Me Crazy. 33 Voices Start the Conversation About Mental Health. Edited by Kelly Jensen. I read another one like this called uh, Life Inside My Mind. I think it might have been a young adult. That was a lot of different authors writing about their own experiences with uh, mental health. And this one is also a lot of different authors with their little little bits so something I can read a little bit here and there throughout the year so I need to read that again I was really excited about that and then I didn't read it um this one is another gift that my husband gave me one year um that was on my list paperback crush the totally radical history of 80s and 90s teen fiction uh, by Gabrielle Moss and I really loved um, Paperbacks from Hell. So I had a feeling I was going to like this because this is the time whenever I was growing up in the 80s and the early 90s. So uh, they've got all the little books and the pictures of them. And yeah, that will just be so fun. And I have not read it yet. It'll be a lovely little book. So I need to get on that. I love when they show all the little books on the back. I just finished reading a... Sweet Valley Twins graphic novel that they had adapted. Um, they're adapting that series to graphic novels. Just a few days ago, I finished that. And that was that was a series I was into whenever I was a kid. Okay, can I dare to get these last books out? I don't think I brought those other books over here. I think I'm missing something. Yeah, I can see them from here that I'm missing something. Okay. Um, Second Life by S.J. Watson. This one, I think I was looking for books that were about... Um, women having affairs. I think that was what it was about. I think that's what this is about. I think it's actually like an online affair, though. It doesn't have a very good description inside the jacket. She loves her husband. She's obsessed by a stranger. A new psychological thriller about a woman with a secret identity that threatens to destroy her. So, she's pretending to be someone else online and having an affair? I don't know. I, I really wanted this book. I don't know why I haven't read it. I'm not really that much into thrillers. I usually listen to those on audio, not read them in print, but... I have it. I'm going to give it a go. Uh, okay. The Chemist by Stephanie Meyer. Um, I was a big Twilight fan. So, 
everything that she read, re wrote, I would read. Um, she wrote The Host After Twilight, and I really liked that. And then she wrote another little book that kind of went with the Twilight series. It was about one character. And that was it. I didn't read anything else. She came out with the other, like, other books that were still the book, but just changed slightly. And I haven't read any of those. But this one... I was I was excited about, although it's nothing like anything I would normally read. Um, she like, I think she said these were like inspired by her like watching the Bourne movies, the Jason Bourne movies. I think that was what it was. Um, an ex agent on the run from her former employees must take one more case to clear her name and save her life totally sounds like Jason Bourne. So, um, yeah, I have no idea how she ended up writing this after the other stuff that she wrote, but I, I have it and I need to actually give it a try. So I know whether it was awful or not, but yeah, so I need to read that. Um, okay. And then this one is, uh, Geisha Alive by Mineko Iwasaki. Um, this one is actually about the woman who, um, Memoirs of a Geisha was based on. Um, she actually, the author spoke to her and that was where a lot of that story came from. And I, I had, I think that, um, they had said that she actually wasn't very pleased with that book for some reason. And so she decided to write about her own life. So that's what this is, and I absolutely loved Memoirs of a Geisha. That was one of my favorite books of all time. I've never reread it. I should do that. Um, but, yeah, I was very disappointed whenever I found out that, um, what is his name, Arthur Golden? Is that what the author of Memoirs of a Geisha is? Um, didn't have anything else that I could read after I read that. I was very upset, so... You'd think that I would have read this by now because it's about the same topic that I was really interested in, but I haven't, so I need to do that. Um, I think that's it, except for... I'll be right back. I'm coming. One second. hope you enjoyed staring at the shelf for a minute. Um, yeah. All right. This one I'm reading right now, which is The Wheel on the School. Oh, let's see. This tag is covering the author. Who is this by? Mindert De Jong. Okay, then. This is not translated, is it? doesn't say so. And it has pictures by Maurice Sendak. Anyway, this is a Newbery Medal winner, um, another one that's on a lot of those lists that I have picked up at some point, and I had never heard of it before I saw it on those lists. It is about, it's an island, I think, I think it's called Shora, and the children and their teacher decide they want to try to attract storks to the island. They never get storks and other places there's another place, um, there's, their town doesn't usually get any, but, like, the town nearby where one of the kids' grandmothers lives or something always gets them, and they get the, have this plan to get, find, uh, wagon wheels to put up on the roofs so that the storks can nest on them, so, and that seems very, it's not, it's not super short or anything, and that description doesn't sound like something that exciting or fun, but it's been really fun so far. I've really liked it. It's funny and just um, so much has happened. I, I, I've loved it. It's not what I've expected at all. And I'm like halfway through that now. So there's that one I'm working on. Um, oh, and then there's this one. This is one that I'm also going to be reading in February. Um, the Fury by John Ferris. This one was made into a movie. Um, it was, this was actually out of a book box that I think, I think it was Nocturnal Readers. It's been a while. 
that I got this one. And I vaguely have this memory, uh, especially because of this actress on the cover of this movie. I think this has something to do with someone having like psychic powers, but like doing horrible things with it or, um, while dangerous and fanatical men vie for the secrets of their awesome power. Okay. Two teenagers possessing a horrifying psychic energy that threatens humanity. Okay. So I, this is horror, I guess. Um, but yeah, I may have seen this whenever I was a kid as a movie or something, but I just, I don't really remember it. So that will be interesting. And then the last one that I had to go fetch, uh, is one that I actually have already read, which is Little Children by Tom Perota. Um, if you don't recognize this author, he's written a lot of things and quite a few of them have been adapted. Um, he wrote Election and that was turned into a movie. Um, he wrote, th this was a movie. Uh, he wrote The Leftovers, I think is what it was called. And it was a little, it was a show or a miniseries or something on HBO or somewhere. Um, what else? Had he written? I have several other things that he's written that I haven't read yet. But anyways, this one, I had watched the movie some time ago, and I loved the movie so much. It has Kate Winslet, and um, I'm forgetting the actor that, that plays opposite her. But a lot of stuff is going on in this story. Um, we have a neighborhood where this pedophile lives, and the families are, you know, getting upset that he has been allowed uh, out of jail and he's at home and just able to be in this neighborhood around their children and all this. So there's that going on. Plus there's um, these two parents uh, that end up having an affair. So you have all of these things going on. And I, what I love about him so much is that he's so great at skipping around to everyone you get so many viewpoints and and it's not just the people you like it's the people that you think oh I don't want to know what's happening with them or what they're thinking about or how this is affecting them um but he does it so well you never feel like I don't want to hear this person's I want to go back to so and so or whatever they're all great and I remember election was just like that too you loved hearing the point of view of the people who were messing up Anyways, he does messed up lives and relationships really well. And I just, it was a blast reading this. I, I loved it. Um, and it did a really good job of, of uh, being adapted to a movie. Because while there was, of course, a lot more information and detail in the book, um, it really felt like the movie stayed true to it really well. So there was that. Um, and this is another person that I've bought all of his books and yet I, and I know that I love his writing and then I don't read them. So I'm glad I got this one done. I'm going to try to get more of them done. So I've read one and a half books from these 26 so far, but, um, that's that. Uh, yeah, we only took like 30 some minutes to do that. And I'm going to be in agony because I've sat on the floor all this time, but whatever uh, it's done. Um, so yeah, I hope you're all doing well. Um, what are you reading right now? Have you set yourself any goals like this? Do you find that you purchase a lot of books that you're excited about that you really want to read? And then they just sit there and you don't read them. Uh, I don't know why I do that just read it like right away. I don't, I don't know. It's not good if it doesn't sit on your shelf for a while and hang out before you read it, I guess, and just keep you company, whatever. Anyways, um, thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you again. Take care.